lithium batteries for dummies. That doesn't sound good. Batteries for the lithium challenged. Nah, that doesn't sound good either. Ah, I know. Lithium batteries for lazy people. That's it. I'm going to get this unboxed, which I won't bore you with, and I'll be right back. For those of you who are ever thinking of putting in lithium, um, as I did in my camper, if you look at any of my videos, which are minimalist elegance in camping, you know that the needs are kept very small as far as water and electricity and so forth. Um, I had a 100 amp AGM battery in the camper, which was good until it started to get older. Um, when they get older, they degrade, and you don't get as uh, you know quite as much current out of them, quite as much use. So, what I decided to do was put in lithium. Now, lithium is fun. It looks like fun. Uh, there are people online who buy the lithium cells, and they buy the battery management systems and all of the connectors, and they compress them and. And there's a whole hobbyist group out there having to do with this. Um, I even bond, belonged to the lithium batteries on a boat site just to learn about them. And I was going to do this. But after a while, I began looking at it. And I began thinking, you know, it'll cost quite a bit to put all of this together. And then I've got to make sure it's put together right, which I think I could do. And then you've got to do something um, called balancing the cells. Uh, there are usually like, say, four cells that you connect together in a series. And you have to bring them all up to the same speed because if one, if, if three of them are topped off and one is low, the four batteries are only as good as the weakest link. Um, so there's something called balancing that has to be done. And then you have a battery management system that uh, keeps them balanced and keeps them from overcharging and, and you know, a whole bunch of stuff like that. Um, and I was thinking, you know, I could do that. But by the time I get done, I'd always be putting my head on the pillow at night in the camper and thinking, is this going to blow up or is it going to catch on fire or whatever? So I began looking around and I came across several places that sell pre-made units. And this is the one I settled on. This is a unit made by Big Battery, bigbattery.com. I have no affiliation with them. They're not giving me anything. I paid a lot for this and I paid for it myself. Um, I'm just doing this in case someone might be interested in doing it also. Those people who don't want to make their own um, lithium unit and want something nice, compact, that's pre-made, and as you'll see, really well made, I think. And um, it's good to go. Just put it in, connect it, and uh, you've got power. Now, this unit is, um, you know, a 12-volt unit. They sell 24 and 48 also. It's 202 amps. And I had a 100 amp battery before. And with a 100 amp battery, an AGM or wet cell battery, you know, after about 50 amps being used up, it really needs to be charged. You only have access to about half the current. This 202 amp unit, being lithium, you have access to more. You have access to about 80% of it. So... Um, it's rated as being usable to 175 amps out of those 202 before you need to uh, to charge it. Now let's take a look at the at the outside of the case first. Here, um, the case is about eight inches by 11 inches by about a foot tall, so it's not that big. It's not much bigger than a single large wet cell battery. Um, it weighs 47 pounds. Um, a wet cell battery is in the mid-60s. And um, I was going to get 
two of them this time around um, if I hadn't gotten this one. So we would have had, you know, at least 120 or 130 pounds compared to this 47. Although I found that as I get older, gravity is changing on this planet. So things are getting heavier because of the increased get gravity of the earth. Um, so this 47 pounds is more like 60 um, a few years ago. So even though they say it's 47 pounds, to me, it feels about 60. 47 pounds is about the weight of a cement block, which is 45. And I used to have, you know, one in each hand and one under each arm. This one, you know, I moved around. It's enough for me. It's got some nice handles on it. They're rope handles and they're bolted onto the side. Um, it has a switch with a voltmeter, which doesn't give you a ton of information, but at least it's something. To connect to this, there's an Anderson connector on the side. And this is an Anderson connector. And they have two sizes of them. This is the larger one with the heavier cables. And this is the 175 amp one, I believe, because that that's what would, would go with this battery. Now, I won't be drawing anywhere near a fraction of that at once. So the smaller ones would have been okay. But this is the connector that goes with it. The connector is on the side over here, and it just pushes in like this. And I'm going to pull it out because I've got a couple of connections on the end, and I don't want them touching and getting 200 amps weld them together. Big Battery also sells these connectors. You can buy them and wire them in yourself, but their prices are actually very good for the connector and, and, and the wires um, going to it. Um, there's nothing else really around here. On the side, it says 300 amp fuse inside. And you can take the top off and you can replace that. And it's a large um, automotive bus fuse that you can get at a, a good auto pot store. There are two covers on this. One is on the front and one is on the top. And I'm not going to take these off to show you the inside because there is a warranty void seal on the side over here. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And this battery has a 10-year warranty on it. And the warranty is very comprehensive as far as what it, what it covers. Um, I don't think the batteries will go 10 years. They've got about 5,000 cycles in them. Um, actually, they'll probably be, I won't be cycling it that, that much. Um, I'll be using it in two places. One, on my electric boat, but that's just during the summer, and it's not all the time. And then this will also be going into the camper. And that's another thing. I have two... 100 amp AGM batteries on the boat. I had one in the camper. I was going to get two this time around. That would have been four AGM batteries at about $160, $70 a piece. So that would have been quite an expense. This ended up being more, but I won't be replacing it in four years like I am with my other batteries. It should go at least double that. And I think that if the unit is still working well and the cells inside get old, this cover comes off and you have access to all four of them. Um, and I think you could just buy some and replace them and you'd still have the same unit without having to buy the unit again. The batteries themselves aren't horribly expensive. Now, like I said, I'm not going to be taking this apart, but I will show you some pictures um, from their site of this unit taking it apart. The front cover, when you take it off, um, also has a, a plexiglass a curved section over it uh, to protect the, um, the battery from, from shorting out. And there is a um, circuit board that actually has all of the traces for connecting the battery in series underneath. <clears throat> and it has a place for the connection for the wires uh, to the batteries and also the small wires that go to the battery management system. When you take that off, you see access to the four cells. They're four lightning cells. And uh, each one is 3.2 watts, which equals 12.8 at the end. That's how you get your 12.8 12, 
12 volts when you when you connect them in series. There's also in this particular unit a fire management system. There's a, a CO2 device that has a th small thermistor near the batteries and if you should have a fire in the battery, which we shouldn't, um, it, it'll put it out. And the demonstration video that they have online is quite impressive. It sounds like someone's hitting it with a CO2 fire extinguisher. When you take the top off, um, you can see where the fuse is. You can see where the connector is. And you can see some of the other cabling. The cables on this are made, it looks like, with a, a hydraulic cable press. So the connection should be about as good as you can get. Um, and um, I have no, no doubt that, that this unit will, will stay together well and it'll be quite durable over time. Now they've got a little bit smaller one um, than this. It's 170 amps, I believe, on 12 volts. And they have various sizes of 24 and 48 volt ones, should anybody be interested in that, depending on your, on your situation and your needs. Now, as far as that battery management system is concerned, it's an electronic device, and, and I'm speaking to people like me who don't know much about this, or at least I did until I started really researching it. Um, but it's an electronic device that keeps the cells at the same level. So they charge and they drop at the same level. And you have to have that with lithium because there are four cells in here and they look about the size, each one about the size of a large, large paperback book. Um, balancing cells, I guess, isn't too hard, but they have to be done. These cells are pre-balanced. Um, some people online have taken them off and looked at some voltage readings and so forth and they found that they're very, very close. So at the factory, at the company, they're pre-balancing these cells so we don't have to do that. When I hook this up inside the camper, uh, you have to have a charger for it. And um, a lot of different chargers will do. I chose uh, what's considered to be one of the better ones, a Victron Energy System charger. No affiliation with them either. Um, it'll charge different kinds of batteries, but it's very good also for lithium. And um, it'll, you know, it'll, it'll have a, the, the uh, the charging range, and then it'll have a, a float, which means it, it, a float. It's kind of interesting. It brings it up, charges it, like on a graph, to its maximum, and then it just kind of drops it down and keeps it going. One good thing about this charger, too, is that it provides 15 amps of power, even if you didn't have the battery. So I've been working on the camper out there with no battery in it. And I've had this plugged into the system and my lights work and the radio and everything works. It's, it's really a, a 15 amp power supply. Um, and you can use it while it's connected to the battery and while you're charging the battery too. So this is a power source for the camper also. Now, my needs for the camper are minimalistic, which is in keeping in line with the, with the title of these things. Um, don't have, don't, I don't have that much. I've got a TV that takes about three amps. It's a 12 volt television. So there's, there's no um, you know, inverters going on here. Everything is 12 volts. Um, it's a, a Naxa TV made for truckers. And I have the, of course, the max fan, which is in the ceiling. And it starts up with a little higher current, but it's basically about four amps. Um, I have some USB charges that are about two amps each. I've got a couple of them. And um, I do have a CPAP machine that um, when you don't use the humidifier for it, um, takes about three, three to four amps. And the CPAP machine um, is a device that you sleep with um, to help keep your airway open so that um, you, know, you don't stop breathing at night and, and snore. Um, it's one thing I have to have. I know a lot of you out there have one. I know you're not thinking, well, wow, what's that? There are a lot of people who have them. A lot of people you don't even know use them that have them. But anyway, none of these devices are on all the time. Like the CPAP machine might be on for up to eight hours in the evening, but the rest of the 24 hours, it isn't. The TV, maybe it'll run four hours in the evening. Maybe it won't. They might be sitting by the campfire instead. Um, 
The, the fan may not run at all, or I may put it on a little bit at 10%, so it's not taking its three or four amps. So I might be taking one amp or less. Um, and the USB ports, well, you know, my watch, which probably does not take that much current to, um, to charge, charges in about 20 minutes, my Apple Watch. And uh, the laptop and, you know, the iPads, you know, in an hour, you've got pretty much a full charge or less. Uh, the batteries today are very good and the charges are very good. So, um, I could use, you know, a fair amount of current, but if you look up and average it per, per day in a 24-hour period, um, how many amps might you use? Um, I figure that, that possibly, possibly around 37 amps would be like maximum, maximum that we might use. And if there's 175 usable amps in this battery, even if we were boondocking and weren't plugged in, we'd get almost five days out of this battery the way we use it. It could be even more if we didn't need half the stuff that, that we have. Um, if we didn't run the fan, which often we don't, we just open up the vent and open up the windows. Um, the fan is one of the, one of the big draws of current. Um, and I've calculated, I have it on paper here, that the, um, the battery should last, in a 24-hour period, should last 7.6 days at that rate for the way that we use it. Now, I'm using amperage here instead of wattage because it's just easier to do. The wattage, you have to, to do some math with it, which I can do. But um, this unit is... Um, is you know, 12.8 volts at 175 usable amps. So that's 2,240 usable amps. Um, it'll actually produce 2,585 uh, watts, excuse me, not amps. Um, so, you know, as far as wattage is concerned for our, our use, that's really, really pretty good. The next step here will be to put this in the camper. It's actually going underneath in the V-nose, um, underneath the front cabinet. Um, and I'm, I got a way to, to bungee it down. This is going to be mounted on a little rack I built on the wall out of a piece of plywood and a couple little pieces of wood. And as you're going to see, I am going to just basically connect it to the red and black wire, the positive and negative wire in the camper. And then, um, as far as charging, I have this breakaway connector that will hook up to the battery also. Um, very, very simple setup. Um, if you've seen some campers and they open up their wheel well and they have these batteries and they have these controllers and they got solar on the roof and they've got wires and fuses and switches and you name it. Um, this battery will go in, there'll be a switch to switch it in and out of the circuit and a charger, and the charger will be a power supply in the camper from when I'm plugged in. That's what we'll do next.